Hey guys, Rory here, breaking down conceptually the 2009 ADCC matchup, Marcelo Garcia and Crone Gracie. I'm not going to be breaking down the entire match unedited. I'm going to be just jumping to the points of the most interesting movements and talking about why they were successful and or why they weren't successful. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is Crone Gracie's ability to actively post. Active posting is responding to our opponent's attempts to shift our center of gravity outside of our ability to base by recomposing the post to keep ourselves balanced. So anytime you have tripped or stumbled while walking, you put your leg out in front of you, you put your arms out in front of you to recompose your base so that you don't fall over. Marcelo uses his left leg to knock out Crone's base so you can drive him down at this angle. Crone is going to stop this back roll of Marcelo's by posting his left leg and by posting on his right elbow so that he can oppose that force vector. He's able to technical stand up and get back up. Marcelo switches to the idiot sweep, make, taking out both of Crone's posts. As Crone falls, he immediately lands on his hands to recompose his base and get back upright. Crone's actively posting with his left arm. Marcelo recognizes this, so a grip fight ensues, trying to take away Crone's ability to actively post. Marcelo is going to elevate Crone and establish the X guard. Crone, once again, is going to be doing an amazing job actively posting and reestablishing his base. So Marcelo elevates with his right butterfly hook, establishes the X guard, and has tight control of Crone's knee which is giving him control to the lever of the hip. Crone's going to change his hip angle slightly and be and he's going to extract his knee so that now he's going to be able to actively post effectively with his arm but also post with his knee, completing the technical stand-up, re-establishing his base. Here Crone once again is using his left arm to actively post. Marcel is going to extend his right leg out to take out Crone's left leg, Crone's immediately going to re-establish his base by actively posting with his right arm there to keep control of his center of gravity and prevent the sweep. Marcelo is working to control Crone's right leg and keep him from being able to post on the mat. As Crone gets close, Marcelo pulls it on top of him so that he can control the center of gravity, but Crone does a great job managing to get his feet planted on the ground again to generate base. There, once again, Crone working active posting to keep himself upright. Great balance. And you're going to see him post again behind himself. Single leg X elevation sweep, two underhook threat, two half Granby. This is an awesome exchange right here. So let's take a look at it. So Marcel Garcia is going to frame Crone away and sit up. He's got a overhook of Crone's right leg, controlling lever to the hip. He's blocking Crone's left arm from being able to actively post. And Crone is dead toes sitting on his knee, so he doesn't have ability to actively post with his left leg. Marcelo's going to elevate him with his right butterfly hook. Crone's going to actively post with his right arm, his head, and his knee. The problem is, is that because it's so late in the stage of the defense, Crone's force vectors aren't aligned to be able to stop Marcelo from driving to this dead angle. Marcelo technical stand-up, performs a technical stand-up, and drops Crone's hip. Crone immediately builds back up to base, shifts Marcelo's center of gravity to the side so that he can start coming out the back door with an underhook. He has managed to turn his head facing towards Marcelo, so he's no longer threatened by the guillotine choke, and he's starting to affect Marcelo's structure by pulling Marcelo's arm slightly behind his back. Marcelo relinquishes the control of the head, and Crone has a strong underhook. Marcelo is going to perform a half Grammy motion using his butt to access Crone's elbow as a lever. So you can see in comparison to the picture up in the top left, Crone's structure is now affected as his shoulder is being internally rotated. Crone recognizes this and swims his arm out before his alignment gets too affected. So in the guard engagement phase, these two are constantly battling for grips. They understand how important it is to get a dominant grip scheme before trying to move forward. Marcelo's going to come up for a takedown, and Crone's going to establish guillotine control. As he tries to sit down to close guard, Marcelo does an excellent escape to get through those legs. 
So before Crone can close his guard, Marcel is going to underhook the right side of Crone's hip. And he's going to overhook Crone's left leg so that he's able to establish over under passing. Crone's going to be trying to stop Marcel's hip mobility by closing his legs. Marcel is going to move through that space. As Marcel moves through that space, he's going to immediately land in base with his left leg and his right leg so that he's able to drive this force vector to roll Crone flat onto his back. Now Crone has Marcel on the weak side for finishing the guillotine choke. Crone's structure is affected because he's unable to close his elbow and Marcel is back in strong alignment. Marcel is going to start threatening a north-south choke and Crone realizes that he is vulnerable and he has to abandon the position. So from the closed guard, Marcelo is going to perform a guard break, attempt a guard pass, and Crone is going to hip escape and perform a high leg motion to stop Marcelo's attempt. So right now, Marcelo is pinning Crone's arm to the mat with his hand, and he's going to use a placeholder by bringing his foot up on top of Crone's bicep. Now Crone can't sit up and follow him as Marcelo stands. As soon as Marcelo gets around the leg, he starts dropping downwards at a 45 degree angle. And Crone is looking to turn, he's going to generate base, hip off to the side, so that he can face towards Marcelo. Now that he's facing his hips towards Marcelo, he's got frames and proper base to be able to pose the force vector. He throws his leg over top, and now you can see how his body is aligned using his spine as a frame, basing off the mats with his shoulders in order to stop Marcelo from progressing. This is just a small clip I wanted to include of Marcelo using two-on-one control to redirect Crone's arm as a lever. So right now, they're engaging in a hand fight. Marcelo gets dominant grip scheme. As Crone reaches for the head, Marcelo ducks under and pushes upwards on the elbow and the hand so that he's accessing the arm as a lever. So he's able to close the inside space and get a takedown. And now for the best and final exchange of the match. Crone is going to grab... Marcelo's foot as a lever to try and stop him from being able to actively post. Attempts to back roll. Marcelo windshield wipers into a duck under threat. Crone high legs. Has to back roll. Marcelo ends up in mount with a guillotine choke. And Crone is forced to tap here. So let's break this one down. Crone's going to reach down with his left arm and grab Marcelo's right leg. He's got lever control, and he's going to use this to try and stop Marcelo from being able to post behind him, as now he sits up. So Crone is lifting his shoulder blades off the mat so that there's space while he has this lever control, and he's going to roll backwards with that momentum, try and roll Marcelo. Marcelo's able to balance and quickly windshield wipers his leg through. So now his right leg is behind Crones, and he's got his right arm controlling the hip. So right here, set up for a duck under. Crone immediately reacts by trying a high leg motion, but he's a little too late because Marcelo's setup was so well timed that he's ahead of the curve now. Crone's vect force vector is not aligned properly to be able to stop Marcelo with frames. You can see his leg is up on top of Marcelo's shoulder. Marcelo is going to be able to now drive forward into this leg, accessing it as a lever. Crone has to back roll. After that happens, he's now behind the defensive curve, and he ends up in the guillotine choke, and Marcelo is able to finish him. So the turning point in this match comes down to alignment. Crone was a step behind Marcelo's offense with that guard pass attempt by responding a little too late with the high leg, and was an improper posture structure and base during that motion. Obviously, Crone knows how to perform a high leg properly. We've seen that earlier in the match, and he's one of the best grapplers on the planet. However, at this level, it is a game of chess, and when one falls behind and makes one mistake, then that will cost you the match. Marcelo was in alignment. Crone was not. Marcelo was able to be successful and capitalize on the vulnerability that he was able to create in Crone. If you're still unsure what I'm talking about, when I mean alignment, then just please watch the last part of this video where I'm going to do an in-depth dive of the two different high leg motions performed. So this is an awesome opportunity where we get to look at a technique that was performed two different times in the same match. One with success, one with failure. 
So let's break down the two high legs. So we're going to look at these two techniques from the overarching concept of alignment. Alignment is how is our body positioned to generate force. Alignment is made out of three things. One, posture, the integrity of our spinal column. Right now, Crone has good posture from his shoulders to his hips in a straight line. He has his shoulders and hips rotated in the same direction, and his neck isn't too bent. So he has good posture. Second is structure, the effective and efficient positioning of our limbs relative to our goal. Crone's goal right now is to stop Marcelo from passing his guard, so he has his left leg framing with his knee into Marcelo's chest and bicep, and he has his right leg over top of Marcelo's head framing him away. Base, a platform from which to apply and absorb force maximally and relative to your goal. Right now, Crone's goal is to stop the guard pass. Marcelo is driving downwards at a 45 degree angle with his force vector. Crone has himself positioned so that using his spine as a frame and his legs continuing that force vector as a frame, he is going to be generating base off of the ground to absorb that force. So right now we can see how these force vectors are opposite to each other. So he's able to stop Marcelo from being able to drive forward. Marcelo recognizes that he can't just drive into a frame. So he's going to try and redirect Crone by lifting him up. So Marcelo pulls up to try and turn Crone's body into a lever rather than a frame. But because Crone was in strong alignment, he was in control of his center of gravity. And Marcelo was unsuccessful being able to pass the guard. So now let's look at the high leg that failed. So Crone reacted too late here because Marcelo advanced so quickly with an excellent guard pass setup that Crone had to lift his hips really high. And what that's done is left his shoulder blades flat on the mat. And you can see how bent his neck is. So while his posture is good from his hips to his shoulders, his neck is actually quite bent. His structure now, instead of being able to use his legs as frames to manage the range, his leg is going past Marcelo and is sitting on Marcelo's shoulder. So Marcelo is going to be able to access as a lever. And you can see his left leg isn't even actually touching Marcelo as a frame. So he's not able to manage the range right now. Then when we're looking at base, because his hips are so high up, the force vector is pointed almost vertically. So this is great if Marcelo was dropping from the ceiling landing on him, but it's not going to be set up properly to be able to uh, oppose the force vector that Marcelo Garcia is going to be creating here in this pass. Marcelo is going to be accessing the legs and hips as a lever and pushing straight forward, which is going to force Crone to have to back roll because he's unable to actually effectively stop Marcelo in his tracks. So now Crone is a step behind and happened to react. So when he back rolls, he's going to be behind the defensive curve of Marcelo's offense, which is going to lead to the guillotine choke. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please visit bjgconcepts.net for more videos like this. Or message me at rvvbjj to let me know about what other high-level competitive matches you want to see from the world's best guys.